TV, the, the one that I sent you of me in front of the, uh, the line of police. Yes, that's what's here yesterday. Um, but actually today it's, uh, it's really raining hard here in Montreal. And, um, there is, there is no one here, including the police. So I was actually able to walk right in. I'm actually inside, um, the hotel steps away from where the meeting is taking place. Amazing. We're going to break down what's happening at this meeting and how it affects Mexicans, Canadians, and people in the United States because this group is mentioned in the SPP documents that Judicial Watch and others sued and got two years ago. We have in my film Endgame, and they're openly admitting it's a North American union, that they're taking city, county, state rights away. So we're not just losing states' rights in Canada or the U.S., it's now being totally transferred outside the nation to these supranational boards. Just like our trade is ruled, not by our own governments, but by the World Trade Organization. Right, NAFTA, World Trade Organization, all kinds of extra governmental agencies, yeah. Well, Sam uh, LeBrer, stay there. We're going to come right back to you and, and, and break down the documents you've gotten from this conference, which is uh, really just a public Bilderberg group meeting. It's not open to the public, but it's, it's more open to the media as they openly push world government. Stay with us. And, and I see so many comments online saying, they don't know what Bilderberg's talking about. They don't know they want world government. What do you mean? It's all admitted. This is Alex Jones with five good reasons you should consider buying a solar power generator this summer. Number one, new climate legislation could easily double or triple your electric bill. Number two, our new energy czar wants to control how much power your electric company allows you to have. It's true. Total government control of electricity in the name of smart grid technology is coming. Number three, in some areas of the country, the power grid is dangerously overloaded, especially with the high demand summer months ahead. Number four, the hurricane and dangerous summer storm season is here again. Every year, thousands of families lose their power from weather-related outages. Number five, a solar power generator provides powerful backup insurance and peace of mind. Folks, I really believe in the solar power generators offered by Solution from Science, a longtime sponsor of ours. You can get more information at www.mysolarbackup.com. That's mysolarbackup.com. Remember, the government doesn't own the sun yet. So go to MySolarBackup.com or call toll-free 877-327-0365. Hello, friends. This is Alex Jones. I've told you for a long time it's important to be self-sufficient. And today, that's more important than ever. We need to be independent. And food and water is the key. You'll never have to stand in a bread line if you have your own bread. You'll never have to go to the Superdome and beg for FEMA to take care of your family in any emergency if you simply prepare. No one is going to take care of your family in the final equation but you. You know eFoodsDirect.com is still able to ship storable food that's safe from E. coli, salmonella, genetic alteration, or Chinese imports. And they do it at almost half the cost of last year's grocery prices. Call 1-800-409-5633 or on the web go to eFoodsDirect.com. Visit eFoodsDirect.com and look over the fine list of high-quality, freeze-dried, and dehydrated foods they have to offer. Watch the free videos, look at their online catalog, or give them a call at 1-800-409-5633. Again, 800-409-5633 or on the web at eFoodsDirect.com. Take action today. The first step is getting storable food. A guy named MZ in Santa Cruz, California, who owns one of our affiliate radio stations. He got laid off from a job he loved many years ago. He was devastated, but it taught him a lesson very early in life, that even when you do a great job for someone and your boss tells you how much he appreciates you every day, there is no job security. You are always in danger of losing your job, unless you take charge of your livelihood and own your own business. Since you are the boss, nobody can fire you. So MZ has been his own boss for over 37 years, and he is passionate about turning other people on to the joys and benefits of working for themselves and not for others. MZ wants to tell you about a low-cost home business opportunity involving the marketing of healthful dark chocolate that can help people lose weight and set you up with an impressive compounding monthly income. Visit chocolate.ownmyself.com and check out the opportunity. That's chocolate.ownmyself.com. It takes very little money, and if you're interested, MZ wants to talk to you. Remember, chocolate.ownmyself.com. Purifier dans le métro. Monsieur, bonsoir. Il y a votre question. Si vous avez vu, je vous adresse à Monsieur Dauphin. My question is for Monsieur Dauphin, yes. Je vous écoute, Monsieur. I'm here uh, tonight to address uh, Monsieur Dauphin's uh, involvement in the signing of the contract in 2004 with uh, Verant, who is providing the uh, security cameras and the installation in our metro. A few months ago, there was a, a group of my colleagues who came to this chamber to ask Mr. Dauphin about this subject. 
which he feigned ignorance about, saying he had no idea what we were talking about, what contract we were talking about, what company we were talking about, even though we have him in press releases uh, describing the wonders uh, that Varen's security systems will bring to Montreal. So I'm not here tonight to ask Mr. Dauphin uh, why he has given this company, which has extensive ties to uh, CIA, Mossad, and MI6, uh, this contract to our city, because it is quite apparent he does not want to answer that question. I'm only here tonight to express my concern as a citizen and as someone who takes the metro every day, to inform all of you that there are many of us in this city who know the truth about what happened on September 11th, what happened in London on 7-7, and that you had better make sure that nothing happens to our city because if an attack happens in the metro and you try and blame it on Al-Qaeda or Iran or whatever you, uh, is going to, they're going to try and blame it on, we will not believe you. And that is, that is the only reason I came here tonight. Thank you very much for your time. We had the occasion, I think it was last year or two years ago, to answer uh, some questions like the one we're having tonight. My colleague, uh, Joe Trudel, the president of the MTC, Montreal Transit Corporation, had the opportunity to answer the, these questions. Yeah, what, no. I, what I remember about this question is that we uh, had been in public tender in 2004, and it's a company that won the public tender. So I'm not aware personally, Mr. Speaker, exactly which company got it, which other company didn't get it. But I know that all the rules were uh, followed, and uh, we had been in public tenders, and uh, there was a selection committee with a jury, and it's the best company, in my knowledge, that got the contract. But otherwise, I have no memory about exactly uh, what happened, if it wasn't a good company or the best company. I know that we have been in public tender and the company Thank you, Mr. Dauphin. Thank you, Mr. Dauphin. Do you have another short question? No, I would just like to clarify that I am not accusing anyone here of complicity in any sort of conspiracy or, or what have you. I simply want to make known that there are thousands of citizens in Montreal that if there is an attack, that we will, we will not believe the stories that you give us. That's all I wanted to say. Thank, Thank you, you sir. All right, that's Sam Labrier joining us from 9-11, uh, Montreal Truth. And they've confronted members of the parliament. They've confronted the former prime ministers. They've confronted the city councils. Bringing this up, and you have to understand, with 7-7, we know the government carried out the attacks, and I've made the film Terror Storm detailing that. That's even more clear-cut than 9-11 which is also very easily proven. But with 7-7, we have a lot of specifics. And that's why they've quietly had to turn loose all the people they claim were involved in supporting the plot. They were really just government agents, people that were being recruited into intelligence, asked to take part in the drill, and then they blew them up on board the trains and buses. That's why Visor Consultancy for the government in the Metro was running a drill of the exact same bus and exact same train, subways, being bombed at the exact same time and date in London. Impossible. Same thing on 9-11. They had the exact same drills, exact same time, USA Today, Associated Press, same buildings being attacked. That way, if good people in government that are compartmentalized and aren't part of the small group carrying out the attack, that way, if the bad guys get caught by the good guys, they can say, oh, we, that was just part of a drill. And they'll even come out and admit they were doing these drills a lot of times, just to throw it in everybody's face and say, well, we admit we were doing the drill. How unusual. But the fact that the gentleman we have on the line with us went down there and confronted them, Sam LeBeer, the fact that he did that preempts what they're doing. Because I remember at the time, being on air, they were already saying in Montreal News, we think al-Qaeda is going to hit the subway. We're pretty sure we're going to have a 7-7 here. And then they had that stage capture of people that were planning it and all the rest of it. And turned out that was fake, just like the thing two weeks ago with the uh, black guys in New York and New Jersey who had no intention of bombing anything. The FBI created the group, tried to get them to carry out terror. They weren't even Muslims, just like Miami in 96. Same story. 
Sam, I, I, well, we can ask him now, saw this threat, went down and preemptively said, don't try that here. Uh, I mean, is that what you did? Is that why you went ahead and went down and talked to him, sir? Well, um, before we get into that, didn't I see a few days ago on your website that there was an explosion in uh, North Carolina that they blamed on a drill? That, you know, it could be the same thing, right? Absolutely. There was a, in fact, that's up on Infowars.com today. I haven't even covered that. Uh, where they staged a terror attack and then just said it was a drill. Was that an operation where the police got caught and then a huge explosion, areas destroyed, is just turned into no big deal. In fact, I'm going to print that right now.